The ceremonies to say a final goodbye to the Queen were emotional for millions of people across the country, but a little bit extra special for those who knew her on a more personal level. Lieutenant General Sir Andrew Gregory, Master Gunner St James's Park, went to the funeral at Westminster Abbey and accompanied the coffin to Wellington Arch. And Dick Griffin, who accompanied Her Majesty on 161 international trips and was her Royal Protection Officer for 14 years, also attended the committal at Windsor. Good morning to you this morning, Dick, morning. And, and also uh, down the line as well. Dick, if we can start with you, because, of course, you were so close personally with Her Majesty that the, the, the ceremony and the pomp and the extraordinary events that we saw yesterday we can all admire. But from a personal level, how was it for you? Well... I was lucky enough to be invited to the committal at St George's Chapel and it was very emotional and it obviously gave me the opportunity to finally say goodbye to Her Majesty the Queen because I'd looked after her and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh for actually 27 years and as my wife said to me recently, I spent more time working with the Queen than I did spending time <laughs> with my wife and I was lucky enough to have a lovely seat just, just inside the west door and I could almost reach out and touch the coffin as it came in. So that was very special. And it was also very lovely, all the people that were invited there because it was staff and lots of her personal friends. So it was very emotional because we were all get, getting together, getting to say hello to each other. Mm -hmm. And it was a very special service. Dick, you um, famously were out walking with the Queen at Balmoral <laughs> when um, some American tourists were there um, on the lookout for the Queen. Absolutely. Well, they weren't quite looking out for the Queen, but... Hoping they might catch sight of her. So, yes. what? tell us this story, because it is... It's such a charming story about, um, about Her Late Majesty and, and how she interacted with people. Well, it, well it's a lovely story, and, and, as you say, it's gone viral, and, and my son will probably kill me for set, telling the story again, because he's heard it so often. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we were out on the hills and just out for a walk, and a couple of tourists were walking towards us, and the Queen would always stop and say hello. And it was a couple of Americans, and they clearly hadn't recognised the Queen, which is fine, and they were telling Her Majesty where they came from, where they were going to next. And then the American gentleman said to the Queen, where do you live? Well, she said, I live in London, where I've got a holiday home just the other side of the hills. Oh, he said, how often do you come up to this part of Scotland? Well, she said, I've been coming up here ever since I was a little girl, so over 80 years. And then you could see him thinking, he said, well, if you've been coming up here for over 80 years, you must have met the Queen. <laughs> and she said, well, I haven't, but Dickie meets her regularly. <laughs> and then he said to me, um, oh, what's she like? And because I'd worked with her so long, I knew I could pull a leg. I said, she can be very cantankerous at times. <laughs> and she gave me that look, and I said, but she's got a wonderful sense of humour. Mm. And then before I could stop him, he comes around, puts his arm around my shoulder, gives his camera to the Queen, <gasps> and says, can you take a picture of us? <laughs> <laughs> and then we repeated, I got them to stand with the Queen, I took a picture of them, never let on. And the Queen said to me, I'd love to be a fly on the wall when he shows those photographs to his friends in America. Oh, I wonder if that's ever happened. Like, have you ever had any contact in any way, discovered who those toys no, were? No, unfortunately, I can't remember where they were from or what yeah. state they were from. How long ago was it? Probably 10, 12 years ago at least. And how old were they? Um, 40s. OK. And they're sitting on some wonderful photographs, oh, if only so they realised. If anyone's watching BritBox yeah. <laughs> right now over in America... And you were in Scotland about yes. 10 years ago. Yep. And you met the man who told you about the Queen the and the lovely lady <laughs> that he was with took a photograph <laughs> of you and the man who'd met the Queen. Absolutely. Then you may have a photograph uh, that's <laughs> worth telling a story about. That's absolutely terrific. Um, right, well, let's talk to um, Lieutenant General Sir Andrew Gregory. Uh, good morning to you. You were in Westminster Abbey... Good morning. ..yesterday. Um, it, it, was, it was a big day for you, wasn't it? Because, actually, um, there was something else going on that, that you perhaps needed to be at. So it was a very big day, um, and I can't match that wonderful story from uh, that we've just heard, but uh, it was a huge honour uh, to be in Westminster Abbey and then as the representative of one of the uh, regiments or corps that Her Majesty was very close to, in my case, the Royal Regiment of Artillery, to march from Westminster Abbey to Wellington Arch. 
But it was a big day because unfortunately um, it had been arranged before Her Majesty died. Yesterday was also my father-in-law's funeral. And I talked to my wife and she said, it is your duty to be uh, with Her Majesty and with His Majesty the King. So uh, John's funeral happened yesterday up in Wakefield with the family and I couldn't be there and that was very difficult. But another of my roles, I am the chief executive of the Soldiers, Sailors, Airmen and Families Association, SAFA, the Armed Forces Charity. And what yesterday and my decision made me reflect on is what military families go through, where we frequently miss Christmases, birthdays, anniversaries. And when the service person is away, the family is at home worrying. And so SAFA's work supporting families all these decades is critically important. And I did my duty yesterday. I was very, very honoured to do my duty, but it wasn't easy. Uh, so, Andrew, can you describe as well, being the CEO of, of such an important organisation, your pride at watching all those servicemen and women and the incredible skill, mm. commitment and dedication in every single aspect of the funeral. It was spellbinding to watch, but I imagine as somebody who represents them in so many ways, it was an extraordinary thing for you to be a part of as well and to watch them. It, absolutely it was. And there have been plans uh, ready for decades for yesterday, and none of us wanted to see them put in practice. But each and every person in whatever role we had yesterday wanted to do our very best to honour Her Majesty and the remarkable life she has led, the values she has upheld, uh, and her family. So 4,000 and more military people, all determined to be as smart as they could with the best drill possible, and I was one of those, and I hope we did her and our king proud. You absolutely did, yeah. and you would have done your father-in-law proud as well. And, um, you know, th that eloquent description of doing your duty, um, you know, the fact that your wife recognised that and, and gave you the dispensation to do that meant that, you know, you did that for your family as well, didn't you? It must have been a heightened emotional day for all of those reasons. Well, it was very interesting, I think, watching His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral at Windsor Castle with the Queen sat alone and she felt it was her duty to be alone on one of the most difficult days of her life and when you serve it's not something you can switch on and off and just say I'll do it today but not tomorrow so my duty was definitely to Her Majesty and to the King and my family understood and I watched the video last night of my father-in-law's funeral uh, and as one does I cried over it and that is just the way it goes. And military families, that is what we do. We serve. It's a huge sacrifice. Uh, Dick, I wonder, from your perspective, what the Queen would have made of yesterday? <laughs> I, I think even the Queen would have been surprised at the response, not just yesterday, um, for the week leading up to it. I mean, there was amazing queues, um, queuing up to see people at Westminster Hall. I mean, some of my friends queued up for 22, 23 hours, and the stories they tell, they just loved every minute of it. Yeah. And I read a story yesterday about an amazing lady who queued up for seven hours, um, then had to go at the queue to take her son to university, and then drove back and joined the queue at the back again and queued up for another 18, 19 hours. I mean, some of these stories are just absolutely amazing. Do you know what? I think, it, for those of us who aren't military, um, I think it felt like a du duty. You know, we now know that a quarter, at least a quarter of a million people really? joined those queues to file past um, the Queen's lying in state at Westminster Hall. And I think it felt like, you know, mm. something that you could do in the spirit of the Queen, because that was, you know, she was about duty. Absolutely. And, you know, as, um, as Andrew Gregory talks about, that, you know, there are certain sacrifices that, you know, she made, that obviously huge sacrifices that the military make. I mean, her life was one of, of devotion and sacrifice in a way, wasn't it? And, uh, absolutely. And what was fascinating, not just so much about 
but, but the funeral is I get the opportunity to go around and talk to schools about Her Majesty the Queen. And, and I remember going to my granddaughter's school and, and giving a talk and said to these children, aged four to 11, would you like me to ask me any questions? And it wasn't the greatest idea because the first question was, how much did you earn doing this job? <laughs> and what's your answer? Um, well, when my wife answered, she said, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> and th then I had questions like, um, did I have to sleep in the Queen's bedroom with her? Did I have to go into the mm. Queen's bedroom and turn her bedside light off? Did I have to go and tuck her up? But, but my <laughs> favourite question, this little girl said to me, no, you've told us how you travelled all over the world with the Queen. When you were in public, did you have to hold a hand to keep her safe? Oh. Anyway, I was at a function a few weeks later and I was telling the Queen about this visit and she said, how, how did it go? And I said, well, it went well, ma'am, apart from the fact they asked me, do I sleep with you? <laughs> and when we go out in public, do we have to hold hands? And the Queen said, well, I certainly hope not. And one of the private secretaries said, to which question? She said, I'm not telling you that. <laughs> she said, that's Dick and I's little secret. <laughs> oh, it's magical. Oh, um, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Dick Griffin, thank you, and Lieutenant General Sir Andrew Gregory, thank you so much for your time as well this morning. We appreciate both.